Hi, thank you for coming. Um, my name is Sandy Rylander, and I do appreciate questions as soon as you have them. We are going to be going over some of the basics, so we are at a um, initial screen right now. Just to give you a little history on me, I um, started out at UC Berkeley and then worked for IBM for about eight years, uh, then started teaching WordPerfect, Lotus, and Boss. Um, did that for a number of years and then looked at Excel, thought it was the best program I'd ever seen in my life, so I started teaching the entire Microsoft Office suite and have done that uh, for many years now. PowerPoint 2010 is a great program. For those of you who perhaps don't know what PowerPoint is, it is a presentation program, so it is good. It um, operates much the same as a slideshow would uh, operate. Some people use it to have a presentation or some people just create handouts with it. Um, but we're going to learn not just how to create a PowerPoint presentation, which is important, um, but also some of the techniques that you should use, some of the guidelines, design guidelines, um, that you should consider when making the presentation. Uh, I don't know if you've seen PowerPoint presentations in the past, but it might be easy to make a presentation, but pretty difficult to make a good looking presentation and to make one that everybody can read and to make one that's not completely boring because it's got way too much text. So we're gonna learn all of those aspects as well or as much as we can in the one hour time frame. So when you come into PowerPoint, um, into a blank presentation, this is what you would see. And think of this as your first PowerPoint slide. Notice that on the first slide, it is completely blank right now. And you don't have to worry about that because we can add design features later. But I will also show you in a moment that if you'd like to start with a template that has design features, I'll show you how to do that as well. But what I want to do just on this blank slide now is show you that this slide has what um, is called two placeholders. You have a placeholder here, here called click to add title. So it's a title slide and here click to add subtitle. So when you go to type in a slide, you're not going to be typing up in this blank area, not that you can't, well, you can add a text box there or do something to add text, but typically you're going to add in a placeholder. So to add text in a placeholder, as it says, you're just going to click and notice then the prompt goes away and you can type in whatever your title is. Um, maybe something like, uh, we'll type in NJP, and then if we want to add a subtitle down here, we can again click, and then we'll put in something like Justice for All. Okay, so that's how easy it is to type text into a placeholder. Now, one of the nice things about a placeholder is that if you want to do anything with an entire placeholder, notice that you've got the outline around the placeholder. If I point to that outline, do you notice that I get a four-headed arrow? Four-headed arrows always mean moving, so it would mean that I could drag the placeholder if I wanted to. In general, you don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit undo. Um, you're going to leave the placeholders where they are, but you can also see that it has sizing handles around the placeholder. So if you want to make a placeholder smaller or larger, you can do so. You can do so at the corner, which is where I'm at. And the nice thing about corners is that you keep your um, placeholder proportional. In other words, I can move it um, in and up and to the left at the same time, as opposed to uh, just moving one direction or another, which is what these other um, sizing handles do. They allow you to move just in one direction, okay? So you can do that. You can also notice there's a green little um, uh, circle at the top, and that means you can rotate. So I can just hold my left mouse button down and use that to rotate. I'm going to undo that again. So those are just some of the things you can do, but also you can format an entire placeholder at the same time if you click on it. So in other words, if I have more than one line of text down here, let's say, uh, and I wanted it all to be a different color or a different size, by clicking on the placeholder, it would be the same as if I have to highlight everything like that. So by clicking on the placeholder, once again, I can make 
let's say, change the color of the font, the size of the font, whatever it is that I'd like to do, happens for all the text in the placeholder. So it's a little bit easier. It's also a way to delete the placeholder. If I have clicked on the placeholder and press delete, the first time I do that, it deletes the contents of the placeholder. The second time I do that, it will delete the placeholder itself. So placeholders are really crucial in PowerPoint, okay? Now, all this time we have worked on just one slide and the one slide appears here. And remember, this is the title slide. The slide also appears over here in this little slides panel. As you add more slides, you're going to see them start building up in this panel and you'll be able to scroll up and down through the slides over here. And then when you wanna work on a particular slide, you're gonna click on a slide and it's going to appear in this area for you to be able to work in that area. Some of the other portions of what you're looking at right now um, is up here. You have, of course, the title bar. And to the left is this thing called the Quick Access Toolbar. And hopefully you've taken other classes that have taught you about the Quick Access Toolbar because it is one of the most um, beneficial tools that Microsoft gives you. What it allows you to do is take any tools that you want off of any of the ribbons, so off of the Home tab, the Insert tab, the Design tab, whatever it is that you use most often, it allows you to have them always at your fingertips. Now, that being said, it would sure be nice to be able to have these tools closer to my work area. So in order to move it below the ribbon, if anybody's had a class from me before, does anybody know how you would move that uh, below the ribbon if you didn't know how? Well, for those of you um, that haven't had a class before, uh, one of the things I always teach in every single class is that if you don't know how to do something, right click on whatever you don't know how to do. Oh, I see Brian Rowe answered right click. Thank you very much. And that's exactly right. So if I right click, then notice I get some options and one of them says show the quick access toolbar below the ribbon. So that's all I have to do to move it to a more advantageous position so that it is closer to my work area, number one, and I have much more room down here to add tools than I do up here, okay? So that's my quick access toolbar. This is the ribbon, of course, with all the different tabs on it, okay? This is slide view over here, and then there's going to be another thing called outline view. You can work in either view. We'll look at that a little bit later. Then down here, this is a notes area. I don't know if you've seen many presentations where what people do is they write an entire book on the screen so that they remember what to say. Instead of doing that, it would be really great if you enlarge this little area down here called the notes area and take your notes down in this area and you'll be able to actually see that notes area as you're giving the presentation so that everybody doesn't have to be looking at your book on screen. You can just have bullets of whatever it is that you'd like people to focus on on screen and then notes to yourself can be down here in the notes area. So that's pretty much what's always visible, okay? So we worked with one slide that has two placeholders on it and it is called a title slide because it's got the title and subtitle. Now you're ready to add another slide to your presentation. What do you do? Well, let's look at our ribbon. Up here, so it says new slide. That sounds like kind of a good thing when we want a second slide, but notice there are two parts to this tool. So the top part, if I just click on it, it's going to bring the, what's called the default slide, which is um, a title plus content kind of a slide. There are many different slide layouts. This is a particular slide layout, the one that's used most. But if you'd like different slide layouts, by clicking on the bottom part, notice you get different options. So the title slide was what you saw first. That's what we had over here. Title and content is what you're seeing here. But there are other slides, uh, slide layouts, one section header, two content, uh, comparison if you're trying to compare two things, title only if you'd like to have a picture down here or um, do something else, completely blank. So there's some different options down here for what your slide is going to look like, okay? Since we have the title and content here, let's go ahead and use it. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and type in PowerPoint, okay? And then here it says click here to add text. 
The reason that this box here is called a content box is because every single thing that you can do in PowerPoint um, can be done with this one box. For instance, if I would like to have a bulleted list, you're already looking at the bullet over here, and I could just click and start typing my bulleted text. If I would rather have a table, then instead of typing here, I could come down here and start a table, a chart, something called SmartArt, which we'll look at in a moment, add a picture from a file on my hard drive, add clip art, and add a media clip, a video or an audio media clip, okay? So let's start, first of all, with a bulleted list. So in PowerPoint, one of the things that we've already learned about PowerPoints are that we have slides, and we have on those slides, we have placeholders. Now, since it's a bulleted list, a placeholder is a part of a slide, so I would consider that a sub-bullet. So I'm going to go ahead and press tab. Tab brings you in a level on your uh, outline, and shift tab will bring you back out, okay? So I'm pressing tab, coming in, and I'm going to put in placeholders, okay? Um, and I'll press enter and tab again. We'll talk about positioning of placeholders, what we already did, sizing of placeholders, deleting placeholders, okay? So that's everything with placeholders. Now I'm going to shift tab, and then I'll type in contents of placeholders, and some of the contents we just looked at would be a table, a chart, smart art, that sort of thing. So really easy to create a bulleted list. Okay, not very interesting, but a great bulleted list. We'll look at how to make it more interesting in a few minutes. All right, so we've created two slides now. Let's create another one. This time, instead of just clicking on, on here to create a single content title slide, let's click on the down arrow and let's look at what a two content slide might look like. So two content still has the title. So we'll do, um, we'll type in tables and charts. So that's what we're going to look at. And down here, let's click on a table. So instead of clicking here to add text, I'm going to come down here. Notice as I point to a table, it says insert table. So I can just click on it. And it'll ask me how many columns and how many rows would I like my uh, table to be. Now, given that I only have half a screen, don't make this too big. Five by two sounds fine. Um, let's change it to five by three. So that's five columns going down and three rows. In fact, let's change it to four columns. And then I'm going to click on OK. And notice that it automatically give it, gives it um, a particular design, but very easy just by pointing up here to different styles. It will give it a different design. Now this up here is called a gallery. I don't know if you've gotten familiar with galleries in other programs, but the reason it's called a gallery is because you can scroll up or down if you want to pick a different look. You can point to whatever look you like without actually clicking on it, so you don't have to select it until you find the one you like. And then at the bottom of all galleries, there's a more tool. If you click on the more tool, then it opens up and shows you every single option. For now, I'm going to just leave it alone, and I'm going to start typing my table. So I'm going to type in name, and then to move to a different cell in the table, this is my second cell, uh, I just press tab, name, address, phone, amount, and whoops amount here. Now to go to the next line down, I don't press enter, I just press tab again. So I'm going to type in Sandy 15 Oak. If I need to um, get to a second line, I can press enter. And let's say I owe $50, something like that. So I can just keep pressing tab, and the nice thing is, just like in Word, when I'm in the bottom right-hand cell of my table, if I need another row, all I have to do is press tab. So you can just keep pressing tab as much as you want to add as many rows as you want. Tables work somewhat the same as they do in Word in that you can point to the um, lines between the columns if you'd like to make your column wider or narrower. Um, and same with the, the row height. You can point to the lines to make them 
taller or shorter. So it's a very simple table. Um, again, don't put too, too many columns or rows because people won't be able to read them. When you're in a table, notice that you have extra, um, two extra um, tabs called table tools tabs. One is for the design like you were seeing a minute ago. Also, you can put in a total row if you'd like to add uh, numbers or whatever. Total row just means that you're going to change the design of that row to look a little bit different so that people know that that's a total row. Um, banded rows, you can see we already have banded rows. In other words, colors every other row. If you don't like that, you can take it off. And you can um, change the first column to having different looks. So this all, or have banded columns. Okay, so this all has to do with just the look. Also shading, if you want to add shading to any of the cells or um, any of the uh, rows or columns, different borders, things like that. So all of these have to do with working with your table. Also draw a table. If you decide you'd like to split this table uh, right here, these cells in two, you can just draw a line straight down and that split the two. If you want to get rid of uh, that, you can just hit the eraser and draw to get rid of it. So that's the same as in any other Microsoft application. When you go to layout, you can do things like insert, delete, split cells, change the direction of a row if you want to, like, if, or excuse me, of a cell. So if you want to have your name rotated, uh, all of those options are there. But since those are so similar to every other program, I'm not going to go into any more detail on that. This is more for PowerPoint than learning about tables. So we're going to come over here now and look at charts. Charts now are always going to be inserted from Excel. So if I click on a chart, notice how similar this looks to the charts feature if you're used to Excel. Um, select the type of chart you want. This first one is a bar chart, but you can go through, or column chart, excuse me. You can go through and look at all the different charts that are available, okay? Um, or pick a line chart or any of these, okay? And then just click on that one, click on OK, and you've got a chart. So all you have to do now is if you want to change any of the contents of it, um, you, well, I double clicked over there on that side, but you can um, double click on any particular item to change the look if you want to, or you can look at the data. Notice up here you've got three tools now just for chart tools. And so if you want to, edit the data, notice there's an edit data uh, tool right here. If you click on that, uh, it brings up this um, Excel spreadsheet because remember again, everything having to do with charts is going to be brought in using Excel. So over here's your Excel. So over here it says series one and if you'd like to say uh, what I'd like that to do is I'd like it to say Portland. Notice that by typing over here, it immediately updates over here. So I can say Portland, Seattle, Tacoma, okay? And then over here, I might say, um, I don't know, um, clients, um, staff, whatever it is that you want. Notice it just updates here, and then you can type in numbers over here, and it will update all of your numbers, okay? If you want to add more rows, you can. If you want to take away, you can also do that. So it's just uh, using all the same techniques that you would in, um, in Excel. When you no longer need to see this data, all you have to do is close it. And it looks like that's something that we don't need. Um, but anytime you need to re-edit it, you can come back here and click on Edit Data. Okay. Again, there's a lot of things that you can do uh, with your charts. It has amazing abilities now to make your charts look great, just like in Excel. They've added so many different features to your charts, and that's all in here, okay? Um, the layout of the charts, like whether you want to have data labels or not, or a data table underneath, uh, just like in Excel, you have all of those options under the layout portion. You can take the data table away because it's kind of uh, taking up too much room. Um, if you want to change where your legend is, you can do that up here under the legend. So all of your different choices are here under layout. 
and then format will allow you to do things like changing colors and, and that sort of thing. Okay. So there's Any a quick questions? question here from Zoe yeah. from um, Northwest Consumer Law Center. Um, do you create the charts directly um, for or in PowerPoint or do you import them already from Excel? Yeah, so the answer is yes to both. You, as you saw, I could just create a chart directly in PowerPoint, as I just did, even though uh, creating it directly in PowerPoint means that it will immediately bring up Excel because you have to create it in Excel now. But um, if you're looking at my mouse right now, you see under Insert uh, Table, there is the ability to insert a table as I insert it here, but there's also the in, uh, ability to insert an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and so you can insert an Excel spreadsheet like that. Um, that would be a plain Excel spreadsheet. Or you can also uh, copy, and as long as you do a paste link instead of, which would be paste special paste link instead of just pasting, you could um, copy one that you've already created in Excel, and it would still be linked to the spreadsheet that you currently have. So um, also under Insert Object, if you don't want to copy and paste link, you can do an Insert Object and then insert a Microsoft Excel, spread, uh, Microsoft Excel chart that way. So lots and lots and lots of different ways of doing it, either inside or pasting or inserting. Did that answer your question? I'm going to assume yes. Yeah, I think that covered it. Okay. All right. So, um, so we've got a couple different charts. Now, let's say, or a couple different slides, three different slides, actually. Notice that on this slide, um, even though it's a perfectly okay slide, um, it's kind of bare over on this right-hand side, and you may decide that's just fine. But you may also say, wow, I wish I kind of thought ahead and I wish that I had done a two content slide like this. Do I now have to copy this and paste this onto a two content slide? And the answer would be no. On that home tab, there is, so here is your new slide tool when you want to add a slide. But if you want to take a, an existing slide like this and you just want to change the layout, the cool thing is you can always come here to the layout um, tool and you can just change it as simply as just clicking on that and then clicking on the layout that you would have preferred. So now if you want to add some more text here, you can. Or you may decide, you know, what would be really nice is to add some interest. I'm going to add a picture. So I click on picture. Now this is not my, uh, this is not my machine. So I don't know, it doesn't look like there are any pictures um, on here. But if there were, I could add a picture. Um, let me see, I think we have a second slideshow, one that I brought in from home, so let's copy and take my picture right there. So it stretched my picture a little bit, but there is a picture now in there, um, and that would have been a picture from the hard drive, okay? So I could do that, or I can also decide to get a clip art, so I can click on clip art, and that'll bring me to, let me move this over here. It'll bring up my clip art task pane um, and allow me to search, like if I want to put in a picture of the computer, then I just type in computer and hit enter or click go. If I find one that I like, I can just click on it, and then it inserts right into my presentation. Notice that when that happens, now you have another um, tab that appears. So remember, you, you'll get these context tabs when, you're, when you've selected an item. You can see that this item is selected. So if I say, gosh, you know, it would add a little bit if I could just get a frame around it. So you could click on one of these frames, or you might decide, wow, it might be fun to put a little, um, one of these little dark, uh, just a dark little frame like that around it. All sorts of different choices. And again, this is a gallery, so if you want to see it all, you can just uh, click on that bottom arrow. It not only puts in different looks like shadows and that sort of thing, but bubbles it and puts in different 
angles and all sorts of different things if you want to. Okay. Um, so that's a picture. Let's see what other things that we have not yet done. Let's go ahead and add one more title content slide. And oh, I did layout, didn't mean to do that. I meant to do another slide. Okay, here we go. And so we've done everything, oh, except a media clip, which I don't currently have. But all you would have to do is click on that and then search for your media clip and have it insert. Okay. All right. So, so there's now a, I have, there's a quick question oh. here, which is yes. to go back. Um, I've been a little unclear about uh, the notes. How do I keep them visible uh, to participants, but invisible when doing the presentation? Visible to participants? You mean visible to the or presenter? To the presenter, sorry. Okay, yeah, there. yeah. But okay, yeah. so um, yeah, so under slideshow, um, which is kind of beyond the scope of this, uh, I'm, I'm happy to show this to you, but uh, in the hour that we have, I just want you to know that we won't be able to cover absolutely everything. So the nice thing is um, maybe Brian can, or maybe already has told you that you have a complete PowerPoint handout at your disposal. So if I don't get to everything, please take advantage of looking that over um, because Obviously, you can't learn everything there is to know uh, about PowerPoint in one hour. But anyway, um, what you want to do is you want to have uh, use presenter view when you're doing the slideshow. And then when you play the show, so I'm going to say I'd like to, um, I'll click on from the beginning. Then can you actually, I, can you see right now what uh, this screen here where it says presenter view up here? Is this the screen you're seeing? Because I've got two screens here. Yes. Yeah, okay, that's perfect. what I, I see. Great. So if that's what you're seeing, then your notes would be up in this area. Let's go. Uh, this is slide one of four. Um, see here it says no notes up here. And so I can have my notes up in this area um, and then just go from slide to slide. And this is a really nice view. This is only for the presenter. The, the, um, the participants will see just the slideshow. So this is a nice view for several reasons. One is you can just read off your notes when this is all they're seeing. The other thing that's really nice is look what you're seeing down here. You're seeing what slide's coming up. So you can move through your slides the way you have always done by using the right or the left arrow or by clicking on the slides. But if you want to skip a slide, I can just come over here and click on that slide and then come back and click over here. So presenter view is just a super nice view. Um, but of course, you have to have then a computer screen that you're looking at. And then the, the one that's only showing this is going to be the monitor or the um, screen that's probably behind you or, or wherever you've got the screen for the other people to see. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. All right. It's really so that, that, was that, oh, go ahead. that dual monitor view is one of the things that, that I see people miss on that, um, that they end up just duplicating their screen to a present to a secondary source. Um, right. But you need that dual monitor set up to make that work. You do, and you need to have it on extend and not duplicate. You definitely, yep. and you need to click on use presenter view. This slideshow tab is just the most amazing tab, and you do want to get to know it. There are so many neat things, and maybe that's something we can cover in next year's, but uh, covering a custom, uh, having a custom slideshow and that sort of thing, what, what I see a lot of people do is create um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different presentations that are all pretty similar, but using some different slides in each and some of the same slides in each. And the bad thing about that is that um, every time a slide changes that needs to be in, let's say, all 10 shows, you're then having to copy that slide into all 10 shows, where in custom slideshows, you can actually select different slides that are going to appear in different shows. So you can sort of have one mega presentation, and within the same slideshow, you could have 10 different slideshows. Um, 
showing different slides. So that means anytime you need to change one slide, that's all you have to change is one slide because every single slideshow is within this presentation. So getting to know this slideshow tab will be just a super big benefit to you as you uh, work with PowerPoint. All right, so anyway, um, back to basics though. So what we've done is so far we've created new slides. We've changed slide layouts, okay? Uh, if you wanna move a slide around, this view over here is kind of helpful for that. Let's say I want this blank slide underneath this tables and charts. I can just drag tables and charts up and hopefully you see this black line over here. This black line means that that's where it's going to drop. I can let it go and now that's as easy as it was to move it, okay? One of the things that I was telling you about earlier or saying that I was going to teach you earlier is a little bit about design concepts. And one of the design concepts, and let's go ahead, or design guidelines, I should call design guidelines, is that you, if there's a rule called the six by six rule. The six by six rule says that you should have no more just put it like that, no more than six lines per slide, and no more than six words per line. Now, that ne almost never happens. You probably noticed that people type lots and lots and lots. Um, but let's say you are, let's say you're typing away, and notice that as, the more I type, the smaller this gets. First of all, very hard for people to read. Second, way, way, way too much text. But let's say that happens and you realize that it's way too much text for one slide and you say, how do I correct this? One really simple way to correct it is to make a duplicate of this slide. So one way to do that is I can come over here and if I don't know how to make a duplicate, what do I do? Well, I right click. So I'm gonna right click on this slide and look at that, it's this duplicate slide. How cool is that? That means now I have two absolutely identical slides. So then I could delete the bottom half of this slide, okay? And come over here and delete the top half of that slide. And that quickly, I've got, I cured my having way too much uh, information on a single slide. Okay. Yeah, and I'd, I'd like to add something very small here. Um, I am definitely of the more uh, Lawrence Lessig uh, design philosophy for slides, which is one to three words and an image, because people's people's attention span really gets split when they read text. Um, but I strongly agree: the less words, the better. And I often see these walls of text that just cure insomnia, but don't do anything to relay information. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna change this back into um, a single content because the other thing I'd like to do is, I, I think one of the things, if you do have more than six lines, like this isn't a terrible slide, it is definitely more than six lines, but it's not terrible. Um, but what is terrible is that it is completely boring, right? And so bulleted slides, which is what people have used ever since PowerPoint began, um, it adds no information as far as the look of it doesn't add any information other than the fact that this is a sub bullet. So what they come up with, and it certainly adds no interest whatsoever. So there is a new thing called smart art. Well, smart art isn't new, but the designs that they have are so far superior to what there used to be, that if you were to select the, um, the text in here, we can actually take this text and convert it to SmartArt. So you can either create SmartArt from scratch, or most likely you may already have some text in here. You can convert to SmartArt, and then look at all the different choices you have and how much more interesting your information could be. Look at that. Even that, this would allow you, by the way, um, the circle to the left of my text is a place to add a picture. But look at all these different, you have different flow designs like this. Look at how much more interesting that is. Okay. 
Okay. So um, I would, instead of using bullets, wherever you can, use smart art because it just, it makes it so much more interesting. Okay. When you get into smart art, notice that you again have two more tabs for smart art tools. Okay. So you can change colors if you want. You can change uh, look of your smart art if you want. You can change, you can convert it back to text if you change your mind and you don't like the smart art, but I can't imagine that you wouldn't like it. Now, if you're starting from scratch, if you don't already have text in there, you go to new slide, again, new content, and this is the smart art. So you can actually start from here. Now, notice this is all over here. So you can see every single different look of smart art that there is. Or if you say, you know what, what I really want to do is have something that um, is a list. It'll just show you the list kinds of things. Like this is really nice if you're trying to have a presentation and introduce different speakers or something, then you could pick one of these picture lists, this one here or this one here, um, or the, they're all, they've all got pictures, so you can just click on whichever one you like the look of. Um, click on OK, and then just click on this to insert the picture. And as you know, we don't have pictures here, but if you did, you'd add a picture. Then come over here and add your text, OK? So you can have just some really, really nice looks. I also like using ones like the ones with the chevrons um, that show a, a process. Well, let's see if I can find one real quick that I like. Um, there was one in particular that had arrows that I liked. But any one of these. I think uh, shows so much more flow and process and this sort of thing here where you have this horizontal bulleted list. Let's go ahead and click on OK and look at that. Um, so if you wanted to put Portland here and then down here you could put whoever is leading the Portland office. Uh, but do you see how much more interesting that would be than just a straight bulleted list of Portland and then Seattle and that sort of thing? So anyway. That's smart art and a lot more about that also in your handout, but really pretty easy to use. Um, all right. Now, so far our presentation hasn't been very pretty, right? Because we started with a blank presentation. Again, we'll show you that under file new, uh, you can start with pre-made presentations and we can look at that in just a minute. So we can look at presentations for meetings or whatever different kinds of presentations you'd like to look at down here. But for the moment, since we've already got one started, let's look at design. And under design, we can come in here and we can pick a design that we like. And again, I haven't selected anything. I'm just sort of um, pointing to different ones. Okay. And when I find one that I like the look of, I can click on it. And look how immediately it changed the look of every single thing in my presentation. Okay? So these designs, if, if I click on all, okay, you can see what they look like. And it changes everything. It changes the, the look of the font, the look of the bullets. I don't know if you remember how the bullets looked before, but they were just circles and lines. Now they've got colors and all those sorts of things. So it changes absolutely everything about a presentation. Okay, so that's under design. Now let's say you like this design. You say that's great, but this black color, I don't like the black color. Well, next to the design, and these are called themes. The themes are a combination of colors, font, and effects. So if you like everything except you don't like the color, go ahead and still pick the design. Then come over to colors. Click on the down arrow. I'm trying to move this out of my way here. Click on the down arrow next to colors. And again, all I have to do is point, and it's going to show me 
different colors. And when I finally like one of them, I can just click on it. Okay, or I can create a new theme color if I want. I'm going to choose this blue one. Okay, font. If I want a different look to my font, notice again I can see it changing as I'm pointing. And effect. So this affects the design tab affects the look. All right. Any questions on any of that so far? All right. Now, notice that up here is the title on each slide. And almost all slides come with titles. If you look back at the home tab where we inserted new slides, notice that we've got a title and content here. We've got a title up here. All of these have titles. The danger, there's a danger though, that when you have too much text in these titles, that what people do, remember earlier I showed you to expand these, you can just go like this. And people don't go that dramatically, thank goodness, but they do, if it gets a little tight up there, they start dragging this down. Now, if you've ever seen a presentation where your eye jumps from screen to screen, it's because people have dragged, especially the bottom line of this title slide. You really, as much as possible, want to leave your placeholders alone. You don't really want to drag them up and down because you want it to, from slide to slide, you want it to have that similar look. Another design guideline that we didn't talk about before was size of type. Notice that if I click in design guidelines, notice that 45 point size, which you may think is really large. But remember, there are people that are going to be sitting in the back of the room that can't see anything if you make it smaller than that, okay? I don't know if you know what points mean, but there are 72 points to the inch. So 72 point font is a one inch tall font. So 45 is a little bit more than a half an inch tall font. So try not to make your font too much smaller than for a title, which should be around 45. And then down here as one of the um, bullet points, notice 32, it shouldn't be a lot smaller. And I showed you earlier that as you type, what, um, what PowerPoint wants to do for you is it wants to fit everything on that slide. And so it starts compressing it till your font becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. That is part of this auto fit option that you're seeing happening over here in the bottom left. If I click on that down arrow, notice the default is auto fit. If I want to stop fitting, then I can click on that and notice then it's going to drop below. And you may say, Sandy, that's not what I want at all. I'd rather have it squeezed onto one. Just remember, you really don't. You don't want to have that many lines on one. Um, slide. So I, and if you do that on all your slides, every single slide will have a different size font, which is very disconcerting. So I would prefer that you not fit. And if you can't fit what you're trying to say on one slide, then put it on another slide or think about being less wordy and put more notes in. Okay. All right. So this is one way to create um, design. Another way, as I was telling you earlier, is under File New, if you want to look under some of these different um, uh, folders, you can find some templates or click on Sample Templates. You can find some templates that might fit your needs. You're going to have to spend some time looking through them, but look through and see what it looks like and see if that's something that appeals to you or not. Uh, look at, I don't want computer, let's look at charts, but just look at ones that, so this is an organization chart or a presentation. I like this presentation one. When you do go to these presentations, notice that it's got a lot of the different, uh, it may have more or less of these slide layouts. Some of them have more slide layouts um, than others, but there's some really nice looks in there. So we've covered 
a lot of these. Now, remember a second ago I said, hey, try not to make these bigger and smaller and that sort of thing. But if you notice somebody has, if you click on a slide and click on reset, did you see how it reset it to its original look? So that's a nice tool right there. All right. All right. Now, if you want to grab slides from another presentation, you've spent a lot of time creating slideshows and now you'd like to get some slides from another slideshow. If you click on new slides, um, do you see at the bottom there's this thing called reuse slides, which is super cool. It allows you to go look for another presentation and bring slides in. I like this so much that I like to have this on my quick access toolbar. So you can right click on it and add to quick access toolbar. So whenever you want to reuse slides, you can just click on that and notice that it brings up the, this pane over here and I can go looking for my, um, my presentation. So I'm going to browse file and I have one um, on the desktop. Oops, wrong one. Uh, let me browse again. I thought that was mine, but that's the Native American one. Um, here we go. Taking a second to import the looks because I have a lot of pictures in there. Okay, but notice simply, I, I don't know why it's taking quite so long, but simply by clicking on it, do you see how it's putting that slide into my presentation? Now, I wish it were showing the background. Because right now, notice that when it's bringing them in, these are all fitting perfectly into my look over here. Oh, here, now, now you can see it. Do you see that the look over here is quite different? The design of these templates is quite different than the design here. So right now what I'm doing is I'm clicking on them, so it's bringing it into this look. But if you say, you know what, for this slide, I'd like it to look exactly like this, then you can say keep source formatting and then click on it and notice how it keeps the look of where it came from. So you have two different choices there. Keep that unchecked and it'll look like the rest of the slideshow or check it and have it look like the slideshow that it came from. But that makes it so easy to insert slides from other shows if you want. It's that reuse slide. Any questions on that? Okay. Now, what most people do when they're new to PowerPoint um, is anytime they want to make a change, they do it right on the slide. So let's say you say, you know what, I really am not a fan of that bullet look. So you might go to the insert, uh, excuse me, to the home tab right here, bullet, and you may say, you know what, that's a better look for my first level bullet. So you'll click on that. And then you'll have to come down here and you'll do it again. And then you'll have to go to all your other slides and do it on your other slides. One of the biggest mistakes people make in PowerPoint is they make all of their changes directly to the slide itself. And it's okay if all you ever want to do is affect one slide. But in general, when you're talking about bullets or font size or even colors or background graphics, you really want, or maybe you do want to have more room up in your title bar, but you want it for all of your title bar. If you're going to do that, what you really want to do is you want to learn more about slide masters. A slide master is like the underlying template for the entire slideshow. It's generally not taught until a more advanced class. But because everybody falls into this trap of making really bad looking slideshows because they, they hand format everything and that's so slow, I'd like to just at least introduce you to the concept. A slide master is going to be found on the view tab. And if you go to view and slide master, what you see is this top level master is what's going to affect every single slide. Well, not every slide. Um, to some extent, it won't affect your title slide, but it'll affect all these other sub slides. 
So if I come in here and I decide I don't like this first level bullet, once again, I can go to my home tab, go to my bullet, change the bullet for my first level. And I don't know if you can see, but my two content slide down here now has that new bullet. Every single content slide now, my this one has that new bullet, okay? And so all I have to do now is I've changed my bullet, maybe change my the height of this, um, this title uh, area if I want to. Again, I want to work with this top slide so it affects them all. But once I'm done, I can say close master view. I'm back in here and notice I didn't have to change it over here. Every single slide now reflects this new look. If I put in a new slide, notice that it already has my new look. So if you have 100 slides, instead of having to change it 100 or 200 or 300 places, you just changed it everywhere. So unfortunately, we're going to run out of time to go too much more into it. But once again, I just want you to be aware of the concept of view, slide master, and making changes here to the look of text, to the size of text, whatever it is that you want to do. And that will affect your entire presentation. Okay. There's a whole lot more to learn about that, but again, it would take more than the hour that we have allotted. So um, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to open this up to any questions you have if I didn't cover something that you were hoping to cover. Oh, speaking of which, actually there is something that I would like to cover before we even go to questions. And that is um, uh, using drawings. Because in PowerPoint, you may use drawings and like this, and just want to show you. So this is the circle shape or the oval shape, right? So if I click on this and I drag, notice that it could be circular or it can be oval. If you want it to be a circle, if I, if when I start dragging, I hold my shift key down as I drag, notice that it has to stay a circle. Same with my rectangle. If I hold my shift key down as I drag, it's going to be a square. Okay. Also, let's go ahead and change, um, actually change the color of this one. Notice that one is on top of the other. Again, if we want to change the uh, stacking, we can bring this back one forward, one at a time by just saying bring forward. Or if we have yet another um, uh, shape on here, let's put in a triangle shape. We have another shape. Now, notice I've got three levels. So if I want to send it not only behind the circle, but also behind this, then by going to arrange, I can, I can say send to back. That's going to send it all the way back, where sending forward or backward will only bring it up or down one level at a time bring forward and bring forward, okay? And there are lots of tools that are available to use with these. Notice this I, as I'm dragging, do you see the line that's letting me center these next to one another? Okay, see that? Right there's that line. So there's a lot of those tools that are available to you. Notice that this allowed me to um, center them in the middle, align them at the top, those lines appear, but also you have, if you highlight them, you can say that you want to arrange them. Whoops, I didn't highlight very well. Um, when you highlight, you can either click on all of them, holding your shift key down, or you can lasso them by starting up in one corner. Make sure you get every single little bit of them in, let go, and lasso them all. And now I can say, hey, I would like to align these left, right. I can line them up in the middle. Okay, I can align them so that they um, can be distributed equally, horizontally, or vertically. Notice how now they're distributed. So there's just a lot of tools on here for working with these. Okay, unfortunately, like I said, we're running out of time, so I thought we'd go to some questions. Yeah, did you have a question? There was a quick question over um, how do you put text into the shape? Ah, that's an excellent question. You type. So all you have to do is click on the shape 
and say, hi there. And that's it. When you're in PowerPoint, just clicking and typing will get to your text in there. Great that's question. Too easy. I know. Any other questions? Uh, just to let people know, in the chat, there is the link to the full 90-page booklet um, that Sandy has put together. Um, it's downloadable as a PDF. There is also a link to a SurveyMonkey survey where you can give us feedback um, over this training. Yeah, so again, this is just not a, you know, PowerPoint is not a topic that you can cover in an hour, but I think you have enough information to really get you going. Um, I actually, I would be neglectful though if I didn't show you one other thing, and that is the views in the bottom right-hand corner. First of all, this would allow you to uh, zoom in and zoom out the zoom slider, but more importantly, down here, you have a slide sorter view that allows you once again to drag and move your slides around if you'd like, or delete them, or add what are called transitions, which are effects that um, affect the look of how slides come in and out. Um, and then this one, being one of the most important ones, is slideshow view, when you're ready to actually show the slides. Um, Unfortunately, right now I'm in two screen view, so the slideshow is presenting on the other screen, but this would be how you would start a slideshow, okay? Um, and then you can also stop a slideshow. Uh, but, um, and when you're doing a slideshow, I wish I actually were looking at it from the screen. Let's see if I can, um, if, if you're actually doing a slideshow, just clicking on the screen, would bring you forward from slide to slide, and you can use your left arrow and right arrow on your keyboard to bring you forward and backward. Slide to slide, I'm going to go ahead and use presenter view to also show you. Let's go ahead and start. Um, let's go back to going here. Oops, didn't want to do that. Hang on. These tools, though you don't, they aren't as visible on your presentation as these are here, but if you point to them in the bottom left-hand corner, this would all allow you to go forward and backward a slide at a time. So would your left and right arrow, which is what I'm doing right now. There's also a key though that just your B, like the letter B, black, will turn your uh, show black, your slide black, and B again would bring it back on, or W for white and bring it back on. And that would allow you, if you're talking about something and you're noticing everybody's looking at your pictures or whatever and you really want them to focus on you, just turn it black and they'll, they'll have nothing to look at. And then when you want them to see it again, you can turn it back on again. Okay, you can also do things like uh, highlighting and that sort of thing, but uh, that's something that you'll have to stay for next time. Any other questions? Um, uh, there was a... Somebody was asking for, again, the link to the guide. Um, I reposted that in the chat. Also, if you go to lsntap.org and uh, type in Sandy and PowerPoint, um, it should show up in the search list. Um, the video of this will be posted within the week um, over to YouTube, and we'll also have a link to this in the blog post after that video is up. 